So I'd seen some molds for composites printed on huge 3D printers like the Thermwood LSAM Cincinnati BAM machines. They look pretty interesting. They print the basic shape oversized with big beads of material. Come back and machine it to final geometry with a large 5-axis router. The end result is a smooth tool surface that is at least theoretically recyclable. I wanted to see if I could make a smaller, simpler, cheaper machine to print similar materials like carbon-filled ABS. I had a 5-axis for trimming, but I needed a way to make large-scale prints. Fortunately, I had an old Motion Master CNC router frame with a 5 by 5 foot table and 3 feet of Z-travel. And I'd seen that Philobot, a company that sells extruders for making 3D printer filament from pellets, had started making a small pellet extruder head. I wasn't up to building my own extruder, but it seemed like an easy way to test the idea. So I got a Centroid Acorn CNC controller, a PC, and some very large NEMA 42 servo stepper motors and set up the router to do 3-axis motion. And I bought one of the Ma Philovot Massive Dimension extruders. The Massive Dimension PH2 is rated for 2 pounds per hour of extrusion with PLA. It has a Technic Clear Path servo driving a 10 to 1 gear and a 5 8 inch extruder screw. There was some question about how it would handle the chopped pellets of filled material because it had been run and tested primarily with round, smoother pellets of PLA. The MDPH2 is a well thought out unit, and with the exception of the feed tube, which Philobot later updated, they sent me a much improved version. Uh, it's a very nicely designed extruder. So I hooked it all up and tested it out. The existing machine table was just a steel frame, so I clamped some aluminum plate to it with a sheet of G10 fiberglass on top. Bed adhesion was handled with glue stick for PLA and later with ABS juice for the ABS. The bed wasn't heated and there was no easy way to build an enclosure. Also, it was winter in a large drafty building. It took some time to get the extrusion speed dialed in using a mix of CNC parameters, I called it the A axis, and the parameters in Simplify 3D which I used to generate the code. Once it was dialed in, it extruded PLA pretty well. I tried different bead thicknesses between 1 and 2 millimeters. The extruder only pushes a small amount of material, so a bead size of about 1.5 millimeters high by 4 to 5 millimeters wide was about ideal. If it went too fast, the servo on the extruder would fault from overloading. With the PLA, the pellet feed was okay, but it would still hang up in the feed tube now and then. I did a lot of whacking the feed tube gently with a screwdriver handle. When I switched up to the ABS, and then the carbon filled ABS, the feed problems got worse. I made an automatic tapper with a little gear motor and a 3D printed hammer. It actually worked pretty well. The Tecmo Electrofill ABS with carbon fill was much more stable than straight ABS and very stiff. I only bought a little, but I wish I'd bought more. It became clear the lack of an enclosure and heated table would limit my ability to print with ABS. I think the really large machines extrude such a large bead that cooling's more of an issue than heating in terms of getting one layer to adhere to the previous one. Not here. Bed adhesion and layer to layer adhesion were a real problem. The big industrial machines use a compaction method, either a roller or a tamper, and this too looks necessary for getting good layer adhesion. Another problem was path control in Simplify 3D. I couldn't get it to traverse around existing paths, so the head would be smearing existing material and crashing into the globs of extra left when the extruder speed wasn't perfectly matched with the path speed. I think that using some kind of constant velocity feed, treating the extruder like a rotary axis in the CNC control, might help. There was a lot of surging and stringing, the starting and stopping were not very tidy. So it worked, but it didn't work. I looked at it after a few weeks and decided that I needed a heated bed and an enclosure. This router was too big and heavy, and I really needed the space where it was sitting. So I took it all apart, converted the machine back to a router, and sold it. I kept the pellet head and saved the linear motion components from another parted out router and I've been thinking about plans for a smaller, faster, fully enclosed printer. Printing composite tooling makes a lot of sense because it would be recyclable and could make the end-to-end -end process much faster. I didn't nail it this time, but I'm going to keep thinking about it. Meanwhile, I sold the old Motion Master on Craigslist and I got one of these. <laughs>